And we are back with the Grombrendel Malekith Showdown. Uh, as mentioned, technically I could auto resolve this for a Pyrrhic victory, I would lose a lot of troops, but the reality is I could win this fight with just my first army, so obviously we're going to be fighting this here. This is the General Malekith Guide on Legendary, as a reminder, which you presumably know because you clicked the video. Last time we have managed to eliminate the first Skaven enemy, now we are going after Grombrendel. Next up will be Valkia, then we'll push east into the Chaos Wastes and probably Norska. At some point we'll go for Lethanar and Tarux. But as mentioned, those two are uniquely dangerous to Dark Elves because they have a a a ambush on offense, and Dark Elves have no protection against that. They have no encamp stance. They are one of, like, I think, two or three factions. I think Vampire Counts and Scarbrand also don't have it. And what makes it worse is that even if your one army can handle getting ambushed and win versus one of their armies, if they are ambushing you, they get, amb they get reinforcements, and you do not. Which I think is kind of, uh, nonsense. So we're going to be waiting back here at the start. We are definitely want them to have to come over towards us. And, well, again, we don't need to be fancy here. We can just make a line of troops. Looks like that actually worked properly. We once, if, if we have a bunch of dwarfs cluster up, we do have piercing bolts of burning. And we have our masters who are still on foot, but they can help fight Grombrendel as needed. And we are going to use our chariots a bit, and we'll have reinforcements coming in. But again, I don't even actually really care about those in this context. So without further ado, let's get rolling here. Again, we want to get in as much chip damage as we can as they're approaching. Is 2,000 a bunch of damage there? Not really. Is it something? Absolutely. Chariots, they're still moving away. Perfect chill wind placement isn't critical. You just need to do some damage. As a reminder, they have already retreated here, so we just need to force them. Army losses. I don't really even care what I'm hitting so much here. As long as I'm hitting something. I'll probably try to slam those chariots into the quarrelers next. Have reinforcements coming in, which is fine, but also a bit irrelevant. I guess, you know, just stack on top of the other guys. I don't really care about you or need you. Grumgrendel's gonna charge at me. So you can see over 12,000 damage with Malekith. And we still have, what's that, 92, which is 23 more casts of Chillwin still. You know, that's pretty good. It looks like Grombrindle's gonna just charge straight in here. Okay, Grombrindle, well, I'm 
Oh, no, he turned back there. Okay. These brimstone guns are coming in. They are just going to immediately get shot down. They get off one volley, and then they die. Goodbye, gyrocopters. Ground Brendel's following after us right here. If he keeps following us, I'm happy for you to chase me, Ground Brendel. 75 and 50, which is slightly better than us, in addition to more hit points. But we have an advantage here that Ground Brendel doesn't have. Like 10 dark shards firing at him. Okay. Come on, White Dwarf. It's also good because he is unbreakable, so taking him out here. Very handy. Let's go slam into the quarrelers over there. Um, Brindle's down to half health. Gotta watch this iron breaks over there. Distracted there. We need to fire over there. We are ready. Destroy. Orders understood. Back. Open to me. dead someplace. Let's get you guys rolling out there. Iron Drake's nearly dead. These Iron Drakes are still just hiding over in the forest. Slightly strange. Okay, you just move up over here, I guess. Chosen of Dark Shards! The merciless host! Alright, they of course they all try to run just right through that. It's an annoying thing they do. Anyway, we've nearly won the battle here. Army losses are probably gonna kick in any second. Dark elves! And we can drop it like a piercing bolt so we're burning there, that's good. Keep firing up the iron drakes. They are the priority. I did not want you to run into that. And there we go. Easy peasy. And everything dies because they've already retreated once. So we don't need to bother chasing them down. Yeah, one Iron Drake actually got off several volleys that it shouldn't have. As you see, the chariots, by the way, because they only have four models, they're at still 75% health after the battle. And you see, even a few of those piercing bolts of ruin did, uh, looks like a good number with the sorceress. Did, but there was still only 6,000 damage compared to Malekith was 25k damage over there. Just racking up those chillins. 
So in this case, we don't really need the replenishment. And we're okay on slaves, so I think the actual ransoming captives will be better here. Because you see, it's more, it's, but you know, you can just generally do a four times ratio, and it's generally accurate enough if you multiply the slaves by four. So we're going to go with the ransom captives. And I don't want you on the chariot, Malekith. I would much rather have you on the cold one. Lord of the Black Tower. So we're putting you back on your cold one. Now, Malekith, uh, sorry, uh, Grombrindle doesn't have much left, so Malekith will be able to sweep in. As kind of mentioned last time, the big thing about that Beastman is just taking him out at some point. Whenever you have the opportunity, it may very, very much vary when you're actually able to do that. So, we have a lot of money, we don't have a ton of income. Well, we're waiting, and we're working on things. Getting Nagaron to level 3 <coughs> will be a big deal, won't it? Since we have extra, I'm going to go ahead and pop the growth thing here. So it'll be 4 turns, possibly 3 turns, when this finishes. This over here, yeah, we sold... No, that's growth. That's growth. Okay. Hagrief almost wants a trade agreement with us. And Gond would like to be confederated, but we're not going to take the public, the, con the control penalty to do that. No, sir. Absolute power is good. I... I'm kind of a fan of that one because it helps mitigate the minus 30 from looting and sacking someplace. And we should be recruiting over here. Okay. Right, but we can probably just leave Yandis to deal with the rebellion. I'll have Malekith push on the remaining dwarf forces. As I've said a few times, like yeah, so Valky will be over there. Valky will be next once we take out Grombrindel. And we basically want to go link up with Malice over to the east. Grom is destroyed. Grand is destroyed now. We're about to get a rebellion there. This is fine. I know my path. It's going to stop the rebellion because Malekith is now there. Which gives us the opportunity to recruit some more troops over here, I suppose. Definitely want to upgrade that. Yeah, so that won't rebel within three turns, so we're okay. In theory, you could get just use all the basic dark shards. We're not really fighting any big ranged enemies, are we? So we already have those. Let's just keep this army cheap for right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's fine, coupled with some dark shards to fill it out. Of so you can see these dread spears only cost us 31 gold each. It's a very, very cheap garrison, and eventually we can turn this into a third army as we keep building things up. Hagrief almost wants a trade agreement. Speak. I will take money from you, sure. I fully expect you to get killed, or I will wipe you Speak. out. But the only promise I make is to see I a guaranteed profit in three turns, and we just made up for that. Okay. I should check to see how many settlements Grombrindle has, because if he has 
two settlements left, then it's just that province there. If he has more, then that means he took some stuff from the Tomb Kings. But yes, our primary concern is securing the northwest corner of the map. And then we have nothing from the north, and nothing from the west. And we have a clear line to go attack. And we can't reach there in one turn. So we'll do this. That'll be fun to take out. We'll have another battle next turn, significant one, and then that should basically be... Yeah, Grombrendel just has those two settlements. I don't know if Grombrendel himself will be back next turn. I guess we shall see. Keep adding more troops there. Keep filling those... I mean, basically, this is there in case Valgia comes and attacks Nagarond. That's effectively why we care. Uh, 15 growth and control plus one are both highly valuable. But getting reworked crossbows faster, I think, is something that I've been focusing a lot on. Because the 20% ammo and 15% range for Dark Shards and Shades is just so good. So I'll probably go for those first. So we may have another battle versus the dwarfs here. Tarax is rampaging down there. There's no reason for us to go get involved. Let him and Hag and uh, Clark are on fight. We'll destroy the winner once one's decided, essentially. Or once we have enough forces, we can dedicate a lot to taking out Tarax. I am a rune lord, not some smith. You're not worth the fight. Okay. Stop that. Malachus, attack. Again, we're not going to take those losses, so again, we get to fight against dwarves. And a large part of this is the Iron, the iron Drake, because you saw they did do a lot of damage last time. This army is actually a lot more ranged heavy. A lot of Thunderers. Four Quarrelers. I would say this army is generally more dangerous. <coughs> and we're going to, at some point... We're going to have to march our lines up to meet, their, meet theirs, basically. The good news is they have to fire through our dread spears and bleak swords with, like, their thunderers. We can arc our shots over theirs, but because they have better range than that we do, especially on the corollers, it is quite dangerous. Um, I do like the high ground over here. Let's use this. I don't need to do anything fancy here. Watch now! Neither has a horse for one more level, which is unfortunate. Did she not level up from that fight with Grombendel, or did I somehow skip over skill points? I don't know. I'm kind of confused. Anyway. Let's go and slap you over there. Again here. Malekith shall go forth. I trade battle. We could do things like actually corner camp. You see, we're still within the deployment zone here. And we could, like, have attack, try to attack the Lord first and try to ambush all the reinforcements. But I'm also trying to show here that you don't need to quote-unquote cheese or be perfectly optimal to still accomplish a lot. Onto slaughter! Blood will flow! Onto slaughter! 
Lord of Nagaroth. Attend me! Forward! Malachith! Spreading misery! Advancing! The Witch King! I will have destruction! <laughs> Hear my words! It's not doing a ton, but when you can cast it 25 more times, that adds up. Okay, we're going to give them another second or two to show up here. Okay, now let's get out. And again, by the way, this is with the dwarfs having 35% spell resistance. I didn't tell you to stop. Keep moving. There's the kind of bouncing off the wall thing I mentioned before. One of the big points over here, of course, was splitting up the enemy army, but if those are trickling in later, then we'll be able to gun down the earlier ones. Yeah, thund there are the Iron Drakes, Thunderers, more Thunderers. Destroy! 
He's picking them to pieces, bit by bit. As you can see, the Thunders are outranging us here. So I'm going to advance forward a little bit. You take out the Iron Drakes. You take out the Thunderers. I think it'd be a beauty when you see you know, Iron Drakes just get deleted like that. There's another unit of Iron Drakes, but it has to actually move up, so we don't have to move up ourselves. I'll take those Iron Drakes out, I want them down for sure. Nice Iron Drakes, it'd be a shame if something happened to them. Get off one blast there. Still hurts against the Dread Spears. Then the Iron Drakes are dead. No fear. Die, weaklings. It is done. Dark shards. Miners blasting charges. We're gonna make sure we shoot these before they get to throw off their blasting charges. Victory's in our grasp. We go with the blasting charges. Kill their lord over here. We can get a charged into their ranged units here now momentarily. Drop down some other spells. I'm just gonna go and smack this here. Yep, there we go. Army losses. I thought that would do it. Alright. And again, they all die and the Lord is dead. And then, like, in two more turns, Ground Bend will be finished off, and then we're going to be heading towards Valkia. And we're almost to getting the level 12 skills for Malekith, which will also be a very big <laughs> economic boost. Money. And again, that's effectively like another 1600 gold. We can repair that. This will trigger rebellion there next turn. This is fine. Supreme Sorceress of We're going to move our other army to defend against there next turn. Oh, there we go. So we're going to pick up Tyrant for Global One Control and income from 5% 5, 5 income from all buildings faction wide. And this effort's redoubled, growth plus 25. Minus 15% construction cost, minus 15% construction time, and income from all buildings. That's a huge bonus wherever you're building. Now, to be clear here, his other skill line, and also another, the motivation through fear is useless. It's like 1 to 1.5% income. I probably will never put a point in it. The seditious or sanguine is actually quite good. We will pick that up. It really eliminates corruption, which is great going through the chaos race, gives you a slight control bonus, and makes the other dark elves like you more, making it easier diplomatic relations and eventually confederation. War leader is also still pretty good. 5% post battle income from post battle income, ah, uh, minus 10% upkeep from all armies. Again, the minus 10% upkeep for all armies is more impactful on normal difficulty or to a lesser extent on hard, because the extra upkeep per army is only 1% on supply lines. Since our supply lines are 4% each, 
that 10% is a lot less significant and deteriorates quite quickly. Uh, scoured and stripped, basically he, his per whenever he personally fights, you get a lot more from looting and capturing. Triumph of Evil, 8% replenishment, it's not bad. Reward Recruit Rank plus 2 faction wide, not bad. The Attrition, eh. Reach equals Grasp, 50% income from post-battle loot, 25% magic uh, uh, drop chance, that's good. Like, both of, the, both of his skill lines are good. My current records are turn 88 domination victory with befriending people and becoming the order tied here and 83 with just conquering everyone here. So this time I'm going to go tyrant and I'm going to try to conquer everyone and see if I can beat or match the turn 83 time basically. So, but both of these lines are very good. The global one control 5% income. If the 5% income I think winds up being better than minus 10% upkeep basically. And then the efforts redoubled really helps supercharge how fast you can build stuff, especially coupled with getting rid of like the corruption instantly wherever he goes when you're fighting the chaos wastes and the like. So, this will have a rebellion here. I'm going to move the army here to help guard it. On over here, we have gotten our first growth. I'm going to go ahead and hit this. Long term, we're definitely going to want that. That should be good for Dread Spears. The rest will be filled with other things. Upgrade our Piercing Bolt to Burning. We now have Dark Steeds. That also lets us get this hit points and melee defense bonus. Turning them to significantly better combatants. And a Rebellion, yep, that is fine. We'll be defending it on a turn. If we can, we, I'll, I'll show you something. I We'll see how it works out. I'm basically going to try to stall the rebellion attacking the city as long as I can. So that way Malekith can get back up and we get a lot more gold out of the rebellion is basically the idea. I'll show you how this works, if it works. I see Tarix is coming up there. I don't know if he might have just lost a battle attacking Hagrif or something. Either way, it's like, we don't... Oh, maybe that's a camp of his. I think that's his camp right there. It's just a weird after image. Either way, we don't want to be vulnerable to him charging up from anywhere. We are also not going to do this quest battle right away. It is a very difficult fight if you play it straight. Karan Kar is destroyed. What is the quest we just got there? maintain control of the three provinces, so we will effectively get that literally next turn. So we're going to stay in our own province here because we're giving it the extra growth and the extra income. And then this is really important and so important we're going to burn slaves on it. This helps unlock a lot of things. The actually upgrading this to tier 3 is not so important, though. But, this will give us the ability to get a Sorceress and Death Hag in this army, but it will give us the ability to get a Death Hag in Malekith's army, and it'll obviously give us more income, cheaper buildings, more growth, more slaves per turn. So that's all very powerful. And you're just gonna come chill over here. We're gonna try to let we're gonna let this rebellion grow for a few turns and see if we can farm a bigger version of it. Over here, if we had more provinces, I'd be hitting sacrifice to authority. I'm not. You get eight control all provinces for 800 slaves, but you can also just get plus 10 control for 200 slaves. It is very good later on once you have more cities, or if you in an emergency, the sacrifice to Akarti. If we were, weren't at high winds of magic in our army, or we really wanted XP gain for sorceresses and supreme sorcerers, it's very good. But it's more of a use it when you need it type of thing. And in 20 turns, we'll be able to get our second black arc, obviously. In 6 turns, we'll be able to upgrade this and start getting dark shards in this army. And I don't actually care about upgrading this, because we're not going to recruit more masters right now, and we're not going to recruit anything else. So it's just a waste of money. Uh, 
Alright, next turn, Grombrendel is taken out, it'll be turn 14. And Nagarond is already tier 3, and we are growing. You're like 6 turns, or 7 turns, or whatever, from getting all the heroes we want. And basically we're going to have the Death Hags come online, essentially when the Sacrifice Chicane runs out, which means we get that alternate source of replenishment. So you can see how all this works together. The key with the Dark Elves is just to be just going for it right off the bat like this. Bray Herds come... Okay, yeah. Anytime Beastmen appear, you kill them first and foremost, because you don't want them going after vulnerable settlements, and you don't want them ambushing you. So we will stop everything to kill these jerks first. Okay. And we can still take you out. Uh, I don't actually care about the bleak swords. I'll probably be replacing them anyway. Okay. Ancestral Throng is dead. We can demolish that building. You can see that now, because Malekith has his ability there, it's only two turns to upgrade that. It's cheaper just to deal with everything else. Um, eventually we will be heading down this direction, but I don't even want to really grab that right now because you can see Tarux is rampaging over there. Actually, this is an opportunity to pick up Hagrafe, I guess. Well, no, I'm still more worried about Valkyrie first. Tarux is weakened, though. A lot, it looks like. So maybe we will take advantage of that when we can. Temple of Cain is about to rebel. Oh, that's right, because the... Alright, we're probably going to have to go secure this. Maybe we'll set up a Black Ark trap near the Circle of Destruction. I'll talk more about that once we get closer. Lord of the Black Court. We do need extra defenses in Nagrond if Valkyria comes for us. What to do? Normally Torax doesn't take that, but he has, so we need to adapt and adjust. Ideally, we want him to take out Kragoth Welcome Deep as well. He's so vulnerable. And the problem is we don't have the income right now to support another army, though getting... Malevolent Lord. Yeah, we can't. All we can do recruit is Dread Spears here. Which obviously are not super impressive overall, though they're a reasonably solid unit. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to focus on the north first. If Tarek attacks the Temple of Cain, whatever, he can't attack Nagarond, and we'll have time to deal with if he attacks Rakdul Gorge or whatever. We still need to secure this part of the map, which also is a lot of white territory, green territory. That gives us a lot of bonuses. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Just so we don't get shot so much by our own units, grab the Ward of Cain there. Arcane Conduit. We get a Martial Name of Power. This isn't really great. Minus 50% up uh, to Deadly Onslaught. It's, I guess, okay. 45 seconds. Or we get 60 Charge Bonus plus Bloodlust. Which is probably better. Neither's really impressive. <coughs> So let's think, right now, it, you basically, this is like a 6% weapon damage increase, effectively. If we get minus 50% cooldown, it's up for 31 seconds out of every 75 seconds. So 
So it's about 40% uptime instead of 25%, is that right? Let me math this out. So it'll be up for 31 out of every 76. Yeah, 40% uptime, which makes it a 10% damage bonus. So it's effectively 4% more damage if we pick the Deadly Onslaught. I'm not saying 4% is nothing, I'm just saying it is severely underwhelming. I guess the Foe Seeker might be the bigger thing. I've normally gone for this in the past, just for the charge bonus plus 60. We'll try this. Whatever. And we also get another Martial Name of Power over here. A much better one. So we have two options. We can get Poison Blade, which is plus 12 attack and poison attacks. Both very strong abilities. Or we can get plus 20% weapon strength and magical attacks. I think the magical attacks and weapon strength are going to be better, though both are very good. Uh, magical attacks were much worse in Warhammer 2. They're now very good in Warhammer 3. And this means we can put our magic weapons on somebody else. And we can just give him a weapon that doesn't have magical attacks. We don't have to give our, bu our budget for that. So that's very good. What was tough and what was the other vicious? Yeah. Okay. And that also should give us the... Or maybe we already got the thing. Yeah, control three provinces bit. Okay. And let's continue. Guess we're fighting the demons way over to the east. The other problem with beastmen encampments is you can't force them out of it. Like, if you can be standing right on top of the encampment and they can just stay there hidden, they are super annoying to fight against and they are, like, brokenly powerful when played. Huh, that's the, so that's the maximum size of the rebellion, or maybe it's because we took the city? I'm not quite sure, honestly. But we don't want that to siege down, so we'll go ahead and Power kill them there. And then Malekith, you will be racing up this direction. You're going to be coming over here. They're going to link up up there because I don't know where their armies are and I don't want an army come in and then take in Harkaldra. I'm not so worried about the other side over there. Iron Coast. Get these bonuses next turn. We'll be able to start building them up as well. So it's three turns till Death Hags. Two turns till Sorceresses. So probably in two turns I'll just finish, take off the last turn of that just so I can recruit them both at the same time. And so we're gonna, it's going to be two we won't declare war on these guys next turn, but we will declare a war on them the turn after that. So, getting a lord here is probably not a horrible notion. There we go, strong. I like strong. Okay. And we can start recruiting some basic stuff with her. Alter Ultimate Darkness, Instability and Military Crackdown will decrease at the same rate. Raptor Gorge will eventually be a problem. We have a decent chunk of money in the bank right now, though still. We're almost growing here, aren't we? Um, it won't. I don't think it will rebel if I do this. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Help get it to grow up a little bit. And we're going to grab Battle of Business. 10% from Battle Loot. It's good. Then that unlocks Upgrade 1, one and then we can get the reworked Crossbows. 
And again, we're just chilling over here. Dark servant. Malicious and cruel. Malicious and And you do have an army, so let's go ahead and start boosting your army. You may wonder, why am I not boosting the Dark Shards? The main answer is because I'm trying to not have to respec the Lords for when we upgrade to Shades. That's the only real reason. And perhaps I should. Just bite the bullet. And if Harganeth starts fighting Valkia, that's great for us. It makes it easier, even easier, to secure this territory. And we don't want to be down there with Tarax being potentially anywhere and ambushing us on attack. There's no real idea, way to force him out of the open. Because even if you destroy all of his settlements, he doesn't care. Okay, Clark Harond is down. That works fine for us. Foundations beset. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and slap that there. If I do this, can I get there? I can't get there in two turns. Okay. So I'll move up to here. It also means we get to start. We get to do an upgrade with him next turn. You are waiting by Har Kaldra. Let's make sure nothing slips through over here. And if we need to converge up at Valkyrie's Fortress up there, we can. And you're basically here to mean Valkyrie can't attack Nagarond. Now, I'll talk a little bit about a Black Ark trap here for a second. There's a bug in the game. It is good, and it is bad. The AI does not see Black Arks in settlements. Now, I'd be thinking, isn't that purely a good thing? The answer is no. And I found this out the very hard way, which is how I first found out about the bug. Let's say Valkyrie comes over here. And she thinks she wants to attack Nagarond, but she doesn't want to attack it right away. So she lays siege to Nagarond. But she, she can't see the Black Ark inside of it. Then on my turn, I'm like, I will attack out. And she's like, oh, there's a Black Ark army and the garrison. That's too much. So she retreats out. But the Black Ark, of course, yeah. cannot follow her. And even if we had another lord, they wouldn't have the garrison backing them up. So then the next turn, Valky's like, oh, hey... All I see is the garrison there. I lay siege. And then on my turn, I attack out and she backs up. And she just keeps doing that. There's no way to get her to stop doing that. And every time, because she keeps doing that, the city cannot build anything. It always just loses its turn of building because Valkyrie keeps sieging it. Or whatever faction you're fighting against. Supremely annoying. Because they don't see the Black Ark. They're not like, hey, maybe I shouldn't go over there. And the Black Ark cannot follow them. Now, on the flip side, to kind of counteract this, it does have the, the situation where if you if, if she will see, Valkyrie will see the Lord here, and she will see the garrison. So she will attack the Lord, and she won't realize the Black Ark will actually reinforce. Or if you stick a Black Ark in, like, a minor settlement, I don't know, Nagar, or Nagraro, Nag Nagrar? Nagrar over there, and you put stick the black arc there because there's no walls. They'll just attack immediately, and they won't see the black arc. So you can use that to basically lure enemies into traps where a very powerful black arc army is able to annihilate them. But it also d makes you very uh, any major settlements like this, the enemy will just keep ping ponging back and forth, and it is supremely annoying. So if they fix the fact that they can't see them, at least you know that's probably for the better. But please make damn sure you fix the ping ponging back and forth. But they just repeatedly lay siege and then run away, repeatedly siege, run away, etc. Because that is... That is supremely annoying. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Okay, yes, we're waiting. We want to be able to upgrade in two turns here. And Valkia and Crone are now at war. With any luck, they'll destroy each other's main armies.
Oh, someone went over there. There looked like there's a battle. I don't know who won. It's probably Valkia's main stack. But whether Valkia won or Kron Hellebron won, I don't know. Given the Legion of the Court, Lord uh, Gore Queen's army looked pretty strong there, I'm guessing she won. But we will see. Your timing is poor. She's a little bit weaker. I don't know. Maybe Gore, maybe Valkyrie did lose. Okay, so first of all, we get to do a quick upgrade over here. Again, you see how fast they're building, which is nice. And then it is time to go to war. I've been looking forward. Why are you here? What Defensive alliance, probably worth grabbing just for the relations boost. This also gives us vision. Now we come over here, we wipe this out. Easy peasy. And we keep moving forward. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish that like I said I would. This allows us to grab who do I want? Who do I want for Malekith? Probably cruel, I guess. And I'll grab Fleet-Footed for Yandis. Cunning just isn't so great. I mean, the ambush success in local-owned region is a little more awkward. It used to be just flat. But the, the poison attacks are obviously useless, because Death Hags have poison attacks. From the get-go. And now we can also grab a Fire Sorceress for you. And we shall see if Valkyrie comes and uh, like attacks us over here. Noble blood! If she doesn't, in a few turns, we'll be able to just push out over there anyway with a foolish stack. That army over there doesn't actually seem too bad, but I don't want to leave Harakaldra too far behind yet. Not until we verify that there's nothing else coming at us in that direction. Iron Coast, heading towards Rebellion. Probably... I think it's probably okay. And you see the ogres are grabbing this, so we'll grab that from their land. They are happily building the, the set, paying the settling costs for us. So, I think this is okay. And you know what, I'm just gonna sell... do a slight sell, just for the plus two public order. Uh, as you may know, when you have under... Under 800 slaves is plus 300 control, under 2,000 slaves is plus 1 control, under 5,000 slaves is minus 1 control, and then my, under 10,000 slaves is, I think, minus 3 control, and then it's minus 5 control if you're over 10,000 slaves, so you want to avoid that to some degree. As you see, we're only making 255 gold per turn, and in fact we will be making... We would go into the negative next turn, except Malekith is also letting us finish this other stuff, so funds are going to be slightly tight here. But they'll get better. Surprised Malice didn't take out Epidemus himself over there. Ah well. There's Valkyrie, where is she? That's what, uh, there we go, there's the Black Ark Trap of Swords. She decided and she was confident she could beat the garrison plus the Lord's reinforcements, but she doesn't see the Black Ark support in it. Um, hmm.
The ransom capped is a slightly better because I'll heal. And that's fine. Okay, well now that her main military is out of the way, we're gonna start we're gonna transfer over and try to really follow up on this. Because Crone's gonna try to be taking the same territory as well. Master of cruelty. Congrats. I shall destroy Oh, close to feet. The aspiring champions are nasty. But this is why we made sure we had these troops over here. Seeking entertainment. So first of all, we are going to want to... Can you even reach there this turn? No. Okay. You are the fleet-footed. You head in this direction. You are the sorceress. Head in this direction. You head up in this direction. So we're going to go ahead and just wait over here. Then we'll take that up next turn. Still a valiant defeat, huh? Oh. Obviously, I strongly disagree with this as being a valiant defeat. But we're going to have to fight this manually, which means we're going to have to do this next time. So, that is that. Grom Brindel is down, but the Legion of the Gore Queen still remains a threat. I will see you then.